Hey y'all, so this is going to be another update on my FDM electric ducted fan. I started this a few months ago with some pretty primitive designs, but since then I've iterated to something that pretty much resembles what you'd find on an off-the-shelf EDF. This is a 70 millimeter setup and all parts are printed with PLA+. To avoid redundancy, I'm going to focus more on the improvements I made from the last video instead of talking about the entire workings of the ducted fan itself. I'll definitely link the previous ones on this video. I got a ton of great feedback from the last video, and while I couldn't incorporate everything that everyone said, I truly believe that every comment kind of pushed me in the right direction in some way. And so to give you the results right off the bat, I ended up hitting 460 grams of thrust, which is around a 50 gram improvement from the last video. So the big theme of this iteration was eliminating perpendicular services within the EDF. So I'm on a student license right now and I don't have access to CFD tools, but I'm going to use the SOLIDWORKS assembly to kind of show you what I was thinking throughout this process. This is an assembly of the EDF shown in the last video. Starting with the inlet, I had chamfered edges that led up right into the fan. Here the flow makes sharp turns as you can see and loses energy as it goes into the duct. I was also running a very small nose cone that left a sizable amount of the fan hub exposed, so a large part of the flow was hitting this perpendicular surface. I had rectangular motor stators, another perpendicular surface. At the back of the motor mount, there is bound to be some flow separation at the end of the motor mount because I lacked something like a tail. And lastly, with the exhaust tube added, you can see that there are clear gaps where the tube and the duct connect, which is just another example of sharp turns taking away flow energy. And so now to compare this with my last iteration, starting from the front again, I used a massive fillet on the inlet instead of a chamfer to eliminate the sharp edges completely. I made a wider and taller nose cone that covered the fan hub entirely. I filleted the edges of the motor stators, making them round instead of the rectangle. I designed a very simple tail cone that reduces flow separation at the back. And then finally, I tweaked the design of the exhaust tube to smoothly connect to the back of the duct. I did get most of the modifications on the first try. I actually went through about half a kilogram of filament and several weeks to produce parts that I liked. I won't bore you by showing all the tests I ran. The components you saw in that final assembly actually was the product of some brute force testing, which I'll dive into a little deeper now. So starting with what I found in the intake, in addition to the sharp edge elimination, the very tip of the intake is rounded to emulate standard fan designs that you might see, for example, on the nacelle of a 737. Before, I had edges that basically went to zero, um, but this time I rounded them. I also increased the diameter slightly from 93 mil to 98 mil. Generally, with these velocity stacks, I found that bigger is better. And while I started off with the modular inlet duct design, where I could test different inlets, put, pull them on and off the ducts, so I could test them against the same ducts, I ended up going with the unibody one, like the last iteration, to save on filament, um, print time, and losses in imperfect mating. So next, the duct. In addition to rounding the motor stators, I gave them a slight angle, which according to some comments offers less flow resistance to the oncoming swirling flow. I considered making a wing-shaped profile motor stator, which would no doubt be more efficient aerodynamics-wise, but I was too lazy to surface model that um, for what I was guessing was marginal gains. Other than that, I eliminated about 5 mil off the front end to cut down on dead space. And so you can see um, on my physical design that the inlet curves right into the blade portion of the duct. Now for the thrust tube, I wanted to share this design I got from a flight test blog, which recommends a 90% exit area and 400% length of the fan diameter for the thrust tube. And so this seems like a huge thrust tube, right? This comes out to 280 millimeters of length. But since they are flight tests, I decided to give it a go. And the results were actually not terrible. With some slight modifications to the testing rig, I ended up clearing 400 grams pretty easily. Unfortunately, this made me even more confused about this whole nozzle thing. My final design used a 110 millimeter, 90% reduction thrust tube. These things are simply too big and too time consuming to print for me to brute force test and get super optimal results. I did think this big guy was pretty fun to watch in action. Another thing to note is that it was by far the quietest test I've run. I think the acoustic effects there are pretty clear. Okay, now for the propellers. Uh, I tried, I think I really did, but I couldn't even get a resin propeller on the motor in the end. 
I used my school's maker spaces to print my propeller in a resin version. I had two completely fail, two that came out but were missing chunks, and one that did fully print, but I ended up breaking it as I was cutting off the supports. So based on this, and also a series of very non-scientific tests that I ran on the broken ones, I am still very concerned about the rigidity of resin and wonder if the thinness of the propeller blades were actually the reason why most of my attempts failed printing in the first place. Even my PLA one eventually broke during testing. Don't worry, I do wear safety glasses. And so the constant load that these propellers must be under has become very clear to me. I believe the resin ones were printed in 80A resin, which I thought would be stiff enough, but maybe it wasn't. I know there are extremely high strength resins out there, thinking things like ABS-like ones in particular, uh, but I didn't have access to those this time around. I will say that while my FDM propeller barely shows any blade profile and probably performs like a rectangular fan, the Formlabs one printed the airfoil shape perfectly. So I have no doubt that a sufficiently strong resin propeller would perform much better. And it should be very clear why EDF manufacturers use things like injection molding or something similar for their fans in the first place. Uh, one more quick mod that was suggested, I ended up adding some homemade rubber washers to the thrust stand and board connections to reduce vibrations in the testing rig. So the thrust lever got a little love this time around as well. So at this point, I'm concluding that FDM can only take me so far, and without the proper tools, there's not much improvement I can do that wouldn't be a significant time and money sink. Two of my lacks clearly stick out above the rest. The first is lack of CFD. I've been basically guessing on all my dimensions, on the inlet, the nozzle, the ducts, and while I have bumped my thrust up using these primitive testing techniques, the aerodynamic and coupling effects of EDF parts have gotten way too complicated for me to feasibly continue. I've seen other people on YouTube come up with different ways to visualize flow, things like smoke tunnels or dry ice, so that could be an option in the future. The other big lack is blade manufacturing techniques. Like I was saying, um, I can't really compete with SLA right now, which probably itself can't compete with things like plastic molds or casting, right? And blade design in general is an endlessly complicated subject, and if it's properly applied, it could probably boost my EDF performance a ton. But again, I am currently limited in the geometry of my fan blades just because I only have FDM on hand. And on top of those, there are many concerns that still linger, many of which were brought up in the last video's feedback, including motor specs. I'm currently using an outrunner motor, but I see most EDFs use inrunners. And I don't know much about motor KV, but I'm pretty sure my 1450 KV setup is on the lower end. Another one is blade balancing, which is probably a huge problem in my current PLA propeller. Another is print quality and layer lines affecting flow characteristics, but that's just a skill issue. And another topic that I think I'm suffering from is uh, motor stators and their role in straightening the flow as it exits a duck. But that's all I have for this one. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm hoping that in some way or another, this video helped you understand aerodynamics and fan designs a bit better, even though I realize that most people watching this probably know a lot more than me. I think it was cool to see how some of the obvious things like a bigger nose cone or thinner motor stators do really make a difference. The original intent of this project was to make an EDF at a significantly lower cost than OEM ones, but now I see more why EDFs are priced the way they are. When you consider all the tuning and manufacturing techniques that go into them, it's hard to think that you can compete with them at home. But anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts on any part of the design and thank you for watching again.